Hello, this is Mary Peabody. Welcome to the Farm Labor Dashboard. I'm here today to do a short tutorial for you on one of my favorite tools, which is the Job Description Generator. So what you're seeing on your screen right now is the face page of the dashboard. Down at the bottom, you will see our tools and the Job Description Generator is right in the middle. So clicking on that, we open up to the face page, which is going to give us a little bit of an uh, information description about what job descriptions are for, um, and why you might want to do one. So go ahead and click on the Get Started page and that actually opens the tool itself. So just a couple of things about the tool itself. Anytime you see um, a red asterisk, that is a required field, which means that you're going to have to put something into that field in order to be able to uh, keep moving forward. Anytime you see um, a green circle with a white question mark in it, that's just a little tip. Um, so the information, the data that you see there or the text that you see there is a little bit of a help tool for you and that will not appear on the final job description so no need to worry about that it's just for your help so I'm going to go ahead and put field crew worker here because that's a fairly common title um, farm summary again is optional but you can go ahead it's a nice thing to go ahead and put in a little bit about who your farm is um, you know and what you grow and produce and um, you know just a little bit of something that gives the the applicant or the person reviewing the job description a sense of where they might be. Um, the position summary, again, is just a very brief overview of what exactly the job is. Um, it can be very broad, it can be, um, you know, very general because you're going to have plenty of opportunities to get very specific in it as we go down through the tool. The next um, field, as you see, is a logo. And again, this is an optional. Um, an optional tool. You don't have to put anything in there, but it will give your final printed um, job descriptions a little bit of a professional look to go ahead and put your farm business logo and name in there. So you can go ahead and do that. You just go ahead and uh, click on the choose file and it uh, and then just uh, move to wherever you keep your uh, logo files and click on it and then hit upload upload and it will uh, go ahead and do that for you and there's also some little tips on what kinds of files and how big the files can be that you can upload so that's again optional but it's something that we do recommend Primary responsibilities are the part of the job description where, just as the title says, you put those responsibilities that are the most critical to success for the job. So this is where you want to see about 80% of your, uh, your job uh, appear in the primary responsibilities. And that's a rule of thumb, but it's pretty standard. Um, and so you want to go ahead and you each one of these little um, Overview titles where you see a little plus mark. If you go ahead and click on that, you'll see a drop down field and you can go ahead and click on the one that you want to select. And they can close it back up again. Equipment and facilities, as you can see, again, there's some op options there for you to select. Um, and you can always go ahead and click um, other duties as assigned. And the next piece that you fill in is the approximate percentage of total work time spent on this task. So since this is a field crew worker, we're going to assume most of their time is going to be in um, plant care and field work. So we'll just say um, dig and plant seeds or transplant seedlings by hand. And I will say that that's, maybe that's like 50% of the job. And maybe that's, you know, what I really want them to do most of their time. So you go ahead and put that in there. You can click on add another item and that just repeats the entire box all over again. So we could go back, we can pick plant care and field work again. And maybe this time we'll say, um, harvest fruits and vegetables by hand and maybe this one is slightly less time maybe this is maybe like 20 percent of the time or something so and once again you can go ahead and click add another item 
and you can always click the other duties as assigned and we do recommend that as a standard operating practice you get used to doing that and you have the you have this appear somewhere in every job description. This just gives you, the manager, a little bit of wiggle room in case you're going to ask somebody to do something that wasn't specifically spelled out in the job description. It just gives you the uh, flexibility to go ahead and do that. So uh, once you're done, and you can always remove an item. So if you decide you don't really want to put that in there, you can go ahead and remove it. Um, I'll just put 10% in here because... Other primary tasks, so if there's something that you did not see that was up there that you think is really critical on your farm or for this particular position, go ahead and write it in there just as you, uh, as you would like it to appear in the job description. Minor or secondary functions, again, just as they sound, are those things that are probably not going to take, they're not going to spend all day every day doing this, but there may be, you know, a few, a few hours a week that you're going to want somebody to do something. So. Um, again, you're welcome to select one of the ones that we've already uh, put out here for you, or you can go ahead and write your own if you have something in here. So maybe we'll put, um, maybe we'll just put set up irrigation ditches. And, and again, that, you know, may not be something that they would do every week, um, or it might be. And again, you don't have to put the percentage of time in here because it's a minor or secondary function. So it's sort of understood that it's, um, it's not going to take up a lot of time. The next field, again, is uh, qualification, skills, and experience. So this is where you're going to give your applicants an opportunity to see what your expectations are for this position and what is it that you really want them to come with. So, you know, maybe you would like strong communication skills. Maybe you would like some prior farm work experience. It doesn't mean you're always going to get it, but these are the kinds of things that you would really like to see in the ideal applicant. Um, work environment is your opportunity to let people have a little bit of an insight into what they should actually be um, prepared to do. So if there's something that they have to lift or carry, um, if they um, need to have a driver's license, um, if they are expected to be outside in all kinds of weather, this is just giving them an opportunity to see what to expect so that if a time comes when they come back to you and say, well, I didn't know that I was going to have to work in the rain, or I didn't know that I would have to work in the blistering sun. Um, you always have the option of saying, well, it technically is right here in your job description. The next box is an open text box, and this is wages and benefits. And we did not put anything in there for you because this varies broadly from one farm to another. But this is where you might want to put in your hourly wage. So maybe we'll put uh, 14, we'll be generous today, $14 per hour. And again, if there are any benefits, um, if there is, um, uh, an incentive program, if there is uh, free or discounted uh, produce, these are the kinds of things that you want to put in there. And then the next one is the type of position. And this is, again, you can click any or all of them. So it's possible that you could have field crew workers who are full-time seasonal, and you might also have some that are part-time seasonal. So you might want to um, you know, do double duty with this job description and just click both of those. And then you want to put in um, who the position reports to just, and again, not a name, but a position. Once you've done all that and you think it's in pretty good shape, you can go ahead and hit submit. And then you have a choice here. And the choice is you can either download, this is a PDF, which is going to give you, um, you know, a professional job description and we'll take a look at this um, and it will download it to your computer. The other p option is what we always recommend for people to do which is download it as a doc file which gives you um, the opportunity to save this in a way that it's easy to edit down the road. So for example, if you wanted to keep this in a file on your computer saying, you know, titled position descriptions, maybe next year you've decided that you'd like um, a little bit different 
job description. So you can open this up and go ahead and do it. So this is my warning to you. Um, if you always do this, then you will have this on your computer. If you do it just as a PDF, you'll have it as a PDF, but it's much harder to edit. And we do not keep um, any of the information that you put in here. So once you exit the dashboard, all of your uh, material and information is gone. So we highly recommend you download this as a doc file. But before you do any of that, this is your opportunity. You can scroll down and sort of see what you put in here. Um, and we kept it very short and simple this time for, uh, for demonstration purposes. Um, the PDF is going to, we did not put in um, a logo, but if we had, the logo would be appearing up here at the top. The position description is here. And as you can see, this is all ready to go. You can print this out, put it in somebody's hands pretty quickly. So this is the job description generator. I highly recommend it as a tool. Um, experiment with it, play with it, um, download those doc files and keep them um, on your computer so that you can go ahead and update them um, anytime that you like. Thank you. This is Mary Peabody and I hope you'll investigate some of our other tools as well.